What's up guys, it's Nicolas Merigali here and I'm doing breakdown for my match against Roberto Jimenez. Well, let's start, I never did that before, but I think it's gonna be, gonna be easy. All right, so um, actually I'm trying to be more positive nowadays, like not using my energy, like my dark side, like too much outside Jiu Jitsu, just when I'm competing. Uh, and when I'm doing like some kind of more heavy media. And for this tournament, I got like, kind of find a balance between being cool outside the mats and like bringing some darkness energy to the moment while I'm competing. And for this match, I think in the first day, to be honest, the second day, I kind of lost a little bit. My mind few times was hard to put myself in the zone, but in the first day it was like, perfect so in on that match that specific one was my second match of the day so I had my body warm I had my mind in the zone and I just like I knew I would tap him I knew it would be a, a easy match but I, I I also knew that Roberto is a very dangerous opponent like he he could score me in different positions he could try some quick submissions that in some point could work so I'm not like invincible so I got like find some precise uh, uh, mindset for this match, like being very aware in any uh, position. And I was like very uh, focused mentally for this match. So my vibe was like precisely on point. That, that was what I felt. I just learned, not actually learned. I was like talking and watching a few athletes and also John talked to me. So how important it is for you before you start a match, you keep your like, body kind of relaxed but not re not like really like you know like loose so you you have like to find a balance between keep your mind sharp but also your body relaxed not like over uh, 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 pressure yourself before the match started starts so we have here roberto person he's a very uh, uh, he represents jiu-jitsu very well so i mean wh when i said before that would be an easy match it's because i understand the gap between us but he's he represents pretty well uh, uh, I know he f his father doesn't like me, but I like Roberto, and he does a good job, man. He does a good job. He's, I mean, his brand, he has a style, like a, a singular style. Uh, his jiu-jitsu is great. He follows submissions. He just tried whatever he wants. So he, he's a very exciting athlete, so I like him. So he got my leg in the beginning. I was like very relaxed. So I actually, I, I let him grab my leg. So I was working right here in some uh, Uchimaras, grabbing the bell. But I mean, at this point, even if he scored like in 20 seconds, if he scored two points, I would have like, 10 minutes to work. I wasn't like afraid about being scored and that was what happened. So here he had some nice single leg attempt with, my, with his hand on my collar. So I was trying some Uchimara, so I, I, I wasn't able to uh, throw him uh, down and he just used some ankle uh, uh, trap and he scored two points. It's fine. So it's kind of tricky because when we start mats, so normally people get like super excited gripping and they spend too much energy gripping the gi, gripping the gi, like tr fighting uh, for the right grip. And it's hard most of the times because if your opponent is not like, engaging your guard, you cannot force him to engage. Like, I mean, you cannot like grab him and pull towards your guard. You have like kind of find some, uh, and I talked this morning to my students about this point, you have to create this, uh, 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 it's not a magic, create the system about expose your guard just enough to give to your opponent a connection and then you make yours, right? Because if you have, if you have your open guard outset, you have your frames in place, even if your opponent jump to your side, you have your frames there so you can frame hand on the shoulder, knee shields and that kind of things. So you can uh, keep uh, in, a, uh, in a comfortable position. And that was what I did with Roberto. I tried like uh, grip him, he was moving away and in some point, I got engaged some good grip. So that, that's the moment I shot my triangle. I shot pretty fast. I didn't know it was that, f that fast. Very fast. Yeah, I shot my tri... I shot or I shoot? Shoot. I shot. I shot. I shot, I, I shot my triangle. I shot my triangle. Thanks for English uh, correction. <laughs> so I knew he would jump because I lost the Moplata. So he jumped and controlled his leg by grabbing the shin. And then he moves back, he jumped again. So I had the option here, that was my mistake. I had the option to come up on top and uh, uh, score two points. 
but I was like holding his sleeve, not in a good way, because as he was jumping, uh, I didn't got, uh, capitalize that situation to come up on top and score and, and maybe build some uh, pressure, uh, uh, some top position, but it was fine. So that is, that is a problem about you jump too much. It helps sometimes, but if you jump too much in wrong ways, you always gonna, in some point, uh, expose your hips. Like, I mean, you, you can let your opponent get uh, under your hips, and that was what, what Roberto just made it. So he was jumping, trying to find some way to pass my guard without pressure from uh, his upper body. So he was just like moving around, and then I got my Ashigaram set up here with no effort. He just like pulled to inside my Ashigaram. All right, so I wanna, <laughs> I wanna give you two points pretty much. So here I'm working, he tried, let's see, I don't remember like how was the match. So he tried scramble on, I mean, he's trying to take my back. He did a good job, like, no, he, he doesn't. At this point, he has my hip. He's controlling my hip because he's perpendicular to my hip. So he's beating my hip position and if he uses his legs uh, in a good way, he can start to hunt to my back. But he started well and I was countering his back, his back attack with my left hand on his pants. So uh, uh, I was uh, right now I just destroy him. So I was fighting with my hand. Look at how this uh, simple detail makes so much difference. I was controlling his inside leg that he had on the scramble. I was controlling his inside leg and I was fighting to switch my inside leg from outside to inside. So when I switch my, at this point, my right leg behind his left leg to right to right, right leg catching the right leg, I was able to beat his hip, elevate his hip, and then start my dragging action to end it up on his back. So I could fight uh, 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 and hunt his back right here, but he was smart, pretty much. He trade a back take for a half guard. It's a smart decision because in the high level uh, 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 competition, if you expose your back, it's pretty much done. So he exposed a, a top half guard. And from here, I think I, yeah, I'm pretty sure I passed his guard. So let's see. I was very comfortable. I got some high elbow position here from top half guard. Uh, I was controlling his top knee with my hand. Look at my face. I'm so, so badass. <laughs> well, sometimes I hate myself, to be honest. <laughs> so relaxed, like breathing and, and doing my shit, like moving my hip high. So when we are inside half guard, so if I have chest to chest, of course, the head, of course, the head position doesn't allow you to uh, go high. But with that, that style of uh, 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 half guard, so we have to bring the hip higher, almost like crossing the shoulder line. And that was what I did. So I was avoiding his outside shoulder, having my elbow on his back. And I was avoiding his inside arm, having my uh, 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 hip right here. And I have my hand on the collar, I can decrease uh, 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 his power to change the hip direction. So I did a good job here. So I passed, so right here I passed his guard. I saw him like turning into myself, so I let him turn because he would reach some turtle position. I had my type right out outside. I had my knee intercepting his movement. So I just slide my knee in a little bit more right here for three minutes, 27. I slide my knee in a little bit more, I had the type right, and then the back take was over. So what I do here, I never uh, uh, extend my arms first. So I always, uh, 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 I primarily have to uh, uh, build some good control and then find some good uh, uh, hip position to start to extend my arms. So I bring my hip high behind his back start to extend my arms and then it's over. So I'm very relaxed here, choking him. I have both hands on the collar. I'm looking to the crowd, like just chilling. Look to John right now. I'm looking John Lennon here, John. So I just tap him, so it's fine. <laughs> so I think I hold a little bit uh, more than the necessary. I, I mean, he was tapping, I was holding, so it was a mistake. I could maybe release, uh, uh, let the collar go first. 
but it was a good match. So he's a nice dude. Like I respect him. Uh, I mean, I didn't sweat. It was a good match. It was a very good match. I told you, I would like, <laughs> I would make this uh, uh, championship like exciting tournament to watch, and that was pretty much what I did. So people were still like talking about the tournament. I mean, people talked more about my performance and my uh, 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 double gold achievement than uh, the Pan Ams by itself. So I want to do something great, man. That's what I want. And I'm getting, so everything's like coming together. So it's going to be fun. So, right, so this one is over. Roberto gave me three uh, perfect opportunities and I was just like moving forward. It's weird because a lot of times we watch like some high level guy competing and doing some nice things like Roberto does in any uh, 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 high level competition, he always perform well. But when we analyze mats, we see that even those high level athletes, they make more mistakes than we can realize. If you are a high level athlete, like I am, like I'm a very technical athlete, I'm, it's not because I have like two, 30 pounds that I'm good, I'm good because my technical level is way higher than everybody. So I can sit down and analyze that man. So he's doing a lot of mistakes. I could like take advantage from those mistakes. And that was what I did on this match. Uh, what I'm and trying to say is that easy. I didn't work that much to win. It was more about Roberto's fault than my superpowers. Like, man, he's doing something crazy. Now I'm just capitalizing any mistake that he did. And it's pretty much that. So that was a good breakdown. So you guys can buy my instructional December this year. Uh, make me great again, so the fucking king of this sport, and it is what it is.